All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay uh, hitting you up with another video. Uh, I apologize, this video is coming late. Um, I got tied up in some stuff, uh, and I haven't been on cam in a while, so I figured I'd go do this video on cam. You know, I kind of want to, you know, talk about a little bit more in depth about Sean Porter. Um, I apologize if anything I say is kind of old news. If you know anything I say that. Uh, people's already mentioned in their videos about Sean Porter. Uh, like I said, I know this video is like, you know, coming a little, little late, but, um, I just wanted to give my thoughts about Sean Porter, uh, his performance over Pauli Malinaji. Uh, and, um, to be honest with you, um, I couldn't really do a prediction for that fight simply because I haven't seen enough of Sean Porter. Uh, I actually did a video with JT Neck, and I talked about it in that video. And I noticed that, you know, the Diaz fight, uh, he looked okay to me, like nothing, you know, nothing spectacular. Um, saw him in the Alexander fight. Um, you know, in that fight, it kind of reminded me of, you know, sometimes in the heat, in the heat of a battle, um, that fight was a clear example of sometimes the fighter will want, you know, sometimes the fighter's will, this hungriness and his drive will overcome the skills, you know, in a, you know, in the critical moment of a fight. And that was a prime example of what he did to Devin Alexander that night. Um, he was just hungrier and he wanted it more. Um, you know, similar to a Keith Thurman right now. I, I think Keith Thurman is, is in that category of that, you know, that fighter that has the hungerness, the drive, and, you know, he has that passion to where sometimes that will, that will overtake, you know, overtake in a fight. Um, not saying that's a bad thing. I actually think that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? But, um, to tell you the truth, I didn't really even expect, um, Pauly Malinaji to get knocked out like that. Um, we all know, we all know the guy's feather fisted this and that. But, um, if you go back and look at his track record, he's never been, never been brutally knocked out like that. I mean, yes, he's been stopped by, uh, you know, Amir Khan, Miguel Cotto, but, um, he got brutally, brutally knocked out. I mean, that was like a kind of knockout, like, um, you know, against like, it reminded me of, you know, when Golovkin knocked out Ishida. Remember when Golovkin knocked out, um, Ishida and his, you know, he literally like knocked him through the ropes and, you know, his head was, you know, outside the ropes and shit. Um, that's what Malinaji did. And he was, um, you know, looked like he was hanging on for dear life on the referee's shoes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it was a great performance by, um, it was a great performance by Alexander. And the thing I noticed about in that fight was that he really, what kind of impressed me was, was that he kept mixing it up against Malinaji. Um, there was times when, um, he would use the jab to get in and then he would clinch. So then he noticed Malinaji was moving around the ring a lot. Then he would cut off the ring. He would go to the body. He was just, it was just doing, you know, different stuff to keep, you know, Malinaji on the edge of his toes. You know what I'm saying? He kept them guessing and then eventually, you know, the stamina really helped him that fight. Um, I think he has good athleticism, uh, to begin with. He has good stamina. He has a good jab. Um, but you know, all that was tied into like, you know, one bow and it just, you know, it really worked wonders against Malinaji. So, um, I never honestly really expected that. And, um, I was really impressed. And, um, I'm pretty sure that this victory has, um, you know, skyrocketed Porter on, you know, the welterweight division and, you know, at least top five, you know, from what I'm seeing from a lot of people. And right now I, I um, he has been doing some work in the welterweight division. Um, so with that being said, I kind of wanted to talk about where I think Kel Brook should go from here. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, Sean Porter, I'm sorry. He's getting ready to fight Kel Brook. That's his mandatory. Um, obviously, they haven't worked out the venues and all that, but 
Um, if I was Sean Porter, um, coming off a dynamic win like that, and if he is targeting Mayweather, which um, I know he has, you know, a um, good amount of respect for, this is what, in my opinion, what Sean Porter should be right now. Now, <clears throat> what he needs to do is to actually, I feel, go to his backyard. Go to England. That way, um, you know, he could develop a fan base, get more people to notice him more. Um, I think that would help him out a lot. And I think it looks good on the resume. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of fighters nowadays, they go overseas and stuff like that. Um, you know, rare circumstances, you, you, you know, you see that. So I think it would look good for Sean Porter to go to Kelbrook's backyard. Um, it would be a clash of two, uh, you know, undefeated fighters, young, strong champions. Um, with that being said, um, this is what, this is what Sean Porter needs to do in that fight. In fact, um, I was going to do a prediction video down the road, but since I got limited time on my channel, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to knock, I'm going to get the, sh knock the shit out. And <clears throat> this is going to be my prediction for Kell Brook versus Sean Porter. Assuming that, you know, no bullshit happens like, you know, you know, in training, like what happens, you know, when Kell Brook was supposed to fight Alexander. This is all Sean Porter needs to do. And it's very, very easy. All he needs to do is just cut off the ring against Kilbrook. Cut off the ring and all you have to do is just make it an inside fighting game. That's it. That's all you have to do. Kilbrook has no inside fighting game. Um, Sean Porter already has that athleticism and the stamina to actually match up with uh, Kilbrook. In fact, I think his athleticism and his stamina is going to match up even better uh, against Kell Brook. Um, I think uh, Sean Porter annihilates Kell Brook if he just takes it to the inside. Because when you saw Kell Brook fighting against Senchenko, when he was on the inside against Senchenko, um, it looked like Senchenko was actually taking him, taking him off his balance. He was looking sloppy at times. Um, he wasn't able to regain his composure. You know, I mean, he regained it, but, you know, it took him a little while. So, Sean Porter is not going to let that happen. Because, you know, Sean Porter has that bulldog mentality. If he goes up in there and takes it on the inside against Kell Brook, he's going to keep, you know, taking it to the inside until, you know, he either knocks him out or he's going to get a stoppage. And from I've seen from uh, Sean Porter's body work, um, his body work is pretty good too. So that's really all what Sean Porter needs to do. Uh, work his jab, cut off the ring, and just make it an inside fighting game because Kell Brook doesn't have that. Uh, same thing with, um, Timothy Bradley. If Timothy Bradley was, was, was to fight Kell Brook, that'll be an easy, that'll be an easy fight for Tim Bradley because he has an excellent inside fighting game. And he just takes it to the inside against Kell Brook and it's, it's game over. There's nothing he's really going to do at that point. Um, so that's what I feel Sean, Sean Porter uh, needs to do. Um, it would also look good when it comes to time for a uh, negotiation with Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Because that way he could say something that, you know, I did something that Floyd didn't even do. You know what I'm saying? So if I was, if I was Sean Porter, that's what I would do. I would go to England. Um, I, I understand that he's a free agent um, from what I know. So I don't think it should be a problem to negotiate, you know, for him to go to England. Um, I still think the welterweight division is still one of probably the best, if not one of the best divisions um, in boxing right now. It's very competitive. Um, there's so many, there's still so many fights that could be made at welterweight. It's just ridiculous. You got, uh, I'm just going to like throw fights. So I'm just going to call fights, you know, out of the hat. I mean, uh, you could get Andre Berto versus Devin Alexander. I think that'll be a good fight. Um, Guerrero versus Pacquiao, if that was to happen. I mean, I know Guerrero's been inactive. I'm just, like I said, I'm just throwing names out the hat. Um, you still got Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter. I think that would be an excellent fight. 
Um, now that's probably one of the best fights I think that could be made right now as well. That'll be a, a really, really excellent fight. Um, I mean, there's just so many, there's just so many good fights that could be made at welterweight. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, you got Danny Garcia talking about he's going to fight at 140 one more time, and then he's going to go up to welterweight. So we can see possibly, you know, Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter down the road. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of, a lot of crazy fights that could be made, man. But in this crazy world of politics, we, we, you know, we live, live with, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of bullshit as well, though. But also shout out to, um, Bernard Hopkins, man. Bernard Hopkins, uh, what he truly did at, you know, 49 years of age was, Truly amazing, and um, I could really tell in the beginning of that fight. You could really, honestly, see that Bernard Hopkins outsmarted the guy. He really outsmarted him, and that and that was just really, uh, truly impressive. Even at at forty nine years of age, the way how was he able to? You could even tell that he was even tricking Shumanov a lot in that fight. You know, setting him up, setting him up for a lot of punches. Um, it was just very impressive what Bernard Hopkins did, man. Pretty much been watching this dude since I was a kid, and um, that that was just truly amazing. <clears throat> um, I don't know how much more I could say that. It was just um, that dude's a real true true legend, man. I might actually do another video on that, going more more in depth about it, but. Um, yeah, shout out to Bernard Hopkins, man. Um, Shumanov was no pushover. The dude was tough. Uh, just like Carl Murat, tough, tough fighter. I, I, I never seen Carl Murat fought, but that was a tough, solid contender, man, for a, for a 49 year old legend, man. But, um, yeah, what do you think about what I said about, uh, Sean Porter going to England to fight Kell Brook? I think that's the right step he should take. And, um, yeah, overall, good win. Um, Peter Cullen did his thing. Um, hopefully, hopefully, he gets one of those fighters that he named at the post-fight interview. Um, I'll be happy, honestly, with either one of those fights that he named at the post-fight interview. So, yeah, hopefully, we can see that down the road, and um, let me know what you guys think. Peace out.